for the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. You might know him from there. And, uh, wow, uh, <laughs> this movie was something else, so we're gonna get into that. So, don't worry, for those of you that have not watched this movie yet, don't worry, there will be a spoiler section and a spoiler-free section. So, first part of this video, spoiler-free. I'm just gonna give general thoughts and opinions about this movie, and then I'm gonna go into the spoiler territory, but I'll give a spoiler, spoiler, spoiler warning first. Okay, so, wow, let me say, uh, there's like no one in the movie theater right now, I guess maybe because it's summertime, or I don't know, I was expecting a lot more people, but I guess it's a weekday, there was like barely anybody in the movie theater when I went to go watch uh, The Suicide Squad, so I guess that's a plus, uh, I had some popcorn, had something to drink, and this movie immediately makes you understand that it is not a PG-13 DC movie, and whoa, like, I knew it was R-rated, but I didn't expect it to be, like, uh, Mortal Kombat level, like, seriously, as someone that watches <laughs> a lot of comic book and superhero movies, this is definitely one of the darkest, uh, I would say DC live action movies, like Joker, that doesn't come close to the violence in this, uh, possibly the Watchmen movie, I know that, uh, Sin City is technically based on, uh, I think a Vertigo comic book series, which is owned by DC, but still, uh, this is a pretty violent movie, so, I know a lot of kids out there, uh, this past week were asking their parents to go watch this, and good luck with that, because after, <laughs> after watching this movie, I was like, you know what, if a kid gets in to watch this with his parents, he's like one in a million, because, yeah, this is not, uh, what I was expecting, and I'm someone that, you know, watches a lot of movies, so, uh, the violence in this is very over the top, very gory, and the movie has kind of a dark comedy vibe to it with that kind of gritty grim dark feeling that dc kind of has you know marvel movies for the most part the exception of maybe like the punisher stuff has been fairly uh you know kind of clean these past few years and dc's been trying you know a lot of their movies batman joker superman have a little bit of that in it, but this, this was like, wow, uh, feels like it was directed by, uh, you know, Tarantino or something, like, seriously out there, so, I'm saying all this stuff, because I just want people to understand that, uh, this is not your average, uh, superhero movie, it's R-rated for a reason, go in expecting, like, uh, Kill Bill, or Deadpool level, maybe violence, like the Deadpool movies were kind of comedic, but, uh, this one definitely was up there, so, just given that, and, uh, <laughs> wow, so, m movie, I have to say, was definitely paying homage to maybe 70s style cinema, I know James Gunn is a fan of that era of movies, so you can definitely see a lot of inspiration in this film, including with the soundtrack, uh, with the music he chose for the movie. There's a lot of scenes, kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy, where, uh, if you're familiar with Guardians of the Galaxy, there's many scenes with music, both from, like, 70s or 80s, incorporated into the movie during key moments to make them, you know, more exciting and iconic, and James Gunn kind of did the same thing in the Suicide Squad movie that I just watched. Um, a lot of the songs, though, were definitely older, so don't go in expecting anything, you know, from the 90s or 2000s, because most of it, from what I heard, was, like, 70s, which is kind of his whole thing in this movie. There were many, like, um, little, little scenes, like, you have to be really into movies, especially older ones, to kind of notice a few little nods or things they were trying to do, 
but uh yeah music was definitely trying to go for that kind of older vibe uh and feel you know the movie starts out with like johnny cash so that's pretty cool um music playing and throughout the movie there's a lot of stuff like that so soundtrack definitely one of the stronger points if you're a fan of this type of music if you're not maybe you would like something more like guardians of the galaxy because that one does play moves music from the 80s which i think might be even more appreciated like as far as the world goes uh because a lot of 70s music has kind of i would say lost its popularity over time like a lot of people may not even know certain songs but uh that's that's my opinion on the music um let's go over the budget of this movie um overall the special effects were crazy in this thing um wow but there were f there were some scenes like in the movie that just felt very like low budget it's weird like you know how batman v superman the, the majority of the movie are like wow they spent money on this like cg and stuff or superman or wonder woman i don't know how much money dc gave james gunn for the suicide squad movie but there are definitely some scenes where you were like huh the special effects in this scene a little bit you know lesser quality compared to say something like guardians of the galaxy I'm, that was another james gunn movie that i guess i'm referencing but yeah and then there's other scenes where everything looks like amazing and super futuristic and cool so yeah they were definitely i guess they they had to work with the budget uh in some scenes you can tell that it's a little bit lower and other scenes it's a little bit higher uh, a lot of famous actors in this movie most notably uh you know we got harley quinn in here and john cena <laughs> uh not necessarily playing john cena but uh wow um he is something else in this movie i'm not gonna spoil anything but you have an idea of what john cena is and in this movie they tried to make him the like exact opposite like he's like i don't know he's out there he <laughs> crazy let's just put it that way john cena in this movie plays a peacemaker who is just very very crazy and then we have margaret robbie playing harley quinn she's super popular a lot of other actors with smaller roles and things like that super cool to see idris elba as a blood sport really enjoyed him and his character in this movie uh just to give kind of a a little bit of backstory for those that don't know what suicide squad is it's a series of comic books been running for a very long time on dc comics uh, it's been rebooted many times there's spin-offs and things like that but generally the suicide squad consists of inmates that basically can get a sentence reduced from their prison time if they um basically set out to accomplish missions or things like that and usually these are crazy or insane suicide missions usually commanded by amanda waller who did a pretty good job in this movie by the way actress that played her forgot her name but she's very very good uh, so amanda waller great in this movie um and yeah that's basically the general theme of the suicide squad movies it's like a group of convicts you know inmates usually from all ranges so you'll get like serial killers with like people that are completely uh normal maybe i want to say like maybe they're in prison by accident they stole something and then you'll have like people with superpowers you'll have like criminal insane people kind of like harley quinn uh she doesn't make that many appearances in the older suicide squad comics by the way it's kind of interesting that with the older suicide squad movie and this one they kind of put harley quinn in there because you know the fans and things like that people will definitely go watch this movie just for harley quinn and usually in the suicide squad comics uh there's like a huge group of characters they're set to do an insane mission that most of them will die if they try to escape there's a microchip implanted in their brain which will explode 
then they'll die. So they don't want that. So they'll try to accomplish the mission and get their sentence reduced. So it's basically forcing criminals with abilities or superpowers to complete tasks under the watch of Amanda Waller. Sounds messed up. It is. And that's the premise of the last Suicide Squad movie and this one. Uh, usually there's a lot of characters. Some get killed off very quickly and some last throughout the movie. So yeah, that's how the comic books work and that's how the movies work so far. So my favorite character in this movie, I'm not going to go into any uh, spoilers or things like that yet, is King Shark. Yes, there is a shark in this movie, King Shark. Uh, really liked King Shark. Uh, there's also a character Polka Dot Man, which I thought was very entertaining. And also Rat Catcher number two. Uh, why Rat Catcher number two, Polka Dot Man, and King Shark are my favorites. Well, you'll have to watch the movie and find out. But, uh, yeah, bizarre character names. Don't go in expecting Superman or Batman or Wonder Woman. Go in expecting Ratcatcher number two, and you'll be, you'll be excited and happy for the movie, I guess. Um, just be very, very aware that this movie gets very dark, especially towards the second half of the movie. It, for the most part, the movie tries to stay in the dark comedy territory. Very dark at times, but still trying to keep like a dark comedy style of humor. Very similar to maybe like Deadpool. Um, and then the movie kind of goes into a little bit of a horror style territory near the end of this movie it kind of does a shift in its tone and yeah that was very unexpected uh reminds me of some older movies that have done this one that comes to mind uh well i'm if i say what comes to mind i think that spoils things but yeah just be aware of that um this is an r-rated dc movie and even more r-rated than other r-rated dc movies like joker that could be PG-13 compared to this one. Like, this is a very hard R. And there are scenes in this movie, which I said, remind me of Mortal Kombat. Like, wow. Uh, definitely not for the squeamish. <laughs> As someone that has played Mortal Kombat, there were scenes in this movie where I was like, wow. They really felt the need to go, like, over the top here. Um, as far as reviews go... This movie has received, like, the best reviews, apparently, out of any recent DC movie. I think since, like, the Batman Dark Knight trilogy and stuff like that. Like, as far as those older DC movies go, uh, this, out of the modern ones, has, like, the highest rating, both on, um, like, uh, Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb. A lot of people are praising this one because it's different. It's not happy uh characters are not safe um so yeah that's definitely uh something like interesting about this movie now i kind of want to get into spoilers and everything so yeah uh my last thoughts i have to say are go watch this movie if you're a dc fan if you're a big fan of the suicide squad uh, then this movie is for you if you're a fan of very dark style uh dc movies then i assume this is going to be right uh in your alley now if you're watching this movie because you think it's going to be harley quinn pg-13 birds of prey or something do not go watch this movie uh if you're thinking of taking like your younger friends or kids or siblings to go see this movie thinking it's going to be like iron man or something do not go see this movie. Uh, so <laughs> that's that's what I have to say. Now let's get to the spoilers, 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 spoilers. Okay, so this movie starts out with a complete cop-out. It trolls the audience. Uh, they show us a bunch of characters, and they all go on a suicide mission. Pete Davidson is one of these characters, and a bunch of other forgettable characters including a weasel which looks absolutely crazy and they all get killed within like the first five minutes of this movie no joke and they get killed in possibly the most gruesome and terrible ways there's a ton of violence uh 
wow, like, it immediately lets you know, and you're kind of like, wait a second, everybody's dying, what's going on here, the only ones that manage to escape are like Rick Flagg and Harley Quinn, because of course, they need them, you know, for the movie, uh, then we're transported to a scene, there's, it's like a flashback, this movie is full of flashbacks, I can think of at least five or four instances where they use flashbacks, uh, they're not that annoying, but I'm not a huge fan of flashbacks in action movies, because I feel like they break the tension when you're getting to an exciting scene, and then it quickly switches to something like three days earlier, or ten minutes before, you're kind of like, hey, we were just having fun in the future, why we have to go back here to explain something, so I get why they do it, but I, I don't know, I feel like in this movie, maybe it was used one or two times too many, but I'm not going to get into that. We're introduced to a new cast of characters, we have Bloodsport, we have uh, Polka Dot Man, we have King Shark, and Peacemaker, played by John Cena, and a bunch of other characters, and basically, they were on the same mission that the early team that all died were on. They just didn't know that they were like a distraction, so that was uh, pretty crazy. So, Amanda Waller, she gives them all a task that they have to go break into a special science lab facility on Corto uh, Maltese and retrieve something, uh, data, and destroy it. So, they're like, okay. So, they're making their way through the jungle. They have to go rescue Rick Flagg, who was taken. There's a pretty crazy scene there where they're in a village or a little, like, encampment, and you have John Cena's character, Peacemaker, and Bloodsport, play, played by Idris Elba, kind of, like, showing off their skills and abilities shooting. They basically kill everybody in this little, little, uh, camp, and then they find Rick Flagg, uh, captured, but he's not captured. He's completely fine and safe, and they just realize they killed, like, a ton of innocent people, and as I said, this movie's a dark comedy, so it's kind of played for laughs, but you're still kind of like, uh, like, bruh, they just killed everybody for no reason, just because they thought they were enemies. Like, the movie kind of plays with that a lot, so, yeah, just be aware of that. It's not, a very, uh, clean or PG-style humor. Uh, so they make their way through, uh, they have to go save Harley Quinn later. Harley Quinn, uh, I'm, I'm skipping over major parts of the movie, I'm just giving a general gist of everything. Uh, Harley Quinn was captured, uh, they were torturing her, she manages to escape, she has a beautiful escape fight sequence with a lot of action, she's just killing everybody, super violent, uh, very, very, like, talented in her, like, fighting abilities, by the way. Uh, early on in the movie, she was given a spear, and she's, like, carrying it around because she thinks, uh, she has, like, a purpose uh, that she needs a spear for, so that comes useful much later, by the way. I'm not gonna get into that now. And, yeah, well, throughout the movie, there's little character scenes, and we get to know a little bit of the characters, like, backstories and things. They're all pretty dark, like, uh, pretty grim, like, very dark backstories, like, Rat Catcher, she catches, uh, well, she doesn't really catch rat rats, uh, she controls them, we find out that her dad was Rat Catcher number one, he dies to a drug overdose, uh, they're, like, him and his daughter were homeless on the streets, he taught her how to, like, control rats and things like that, and it's, like, a really sad backstory, like, you're like, ouch, like, what are you doing to me, DC? This is not, uh, funny right now. This is kind of, like, painful, like, very sad. Same kind of backstory for Polka Dot Man. We find out that his mom worked for Star Labs, um, was obsessed with making, like, her children, uh, superheroes, so she intentionally poisoned him with, like, a interstellar virus, which basically makes him shoot out Polka Dots. If he doesn't do that, he'll die. So, like, wow, that's messed up. And he's so mad at his mom that he, like, has delusions and sees everybody as his mom sometimes. So that's a theme in the movie. Uh, Peacemaker, kind of very, uh, 
like a annoying character let's put it that way there's there's funny scenes with him though there's like this one scene where everybody's sleeping king shark gets hungry at night time tries to eat rat catcher girl and then like a, her rat kind of wakes everybody up they shoot king shark and you know uh everything's good later like a uh, rat catcher becomes friends with king shark and they agree like not to fight or he won't eat her or things like that it's kind of funny king shark's a great character in this movie probably the best in my opinion but uh this scene where everybody wakes up like everybody's sleeping with their clothes but the only one that's not sleeping with their clothes is peacemaker he's like completely in underwear in the jungle so he like wakes up and he's like standing up and everyone's like what are you doing naked like what what is going on here that was really funny completely unexpected so there's a lot of scenes like that with john cena's uh, peacemaker character in this movie which just make you laugh they try to make him very like a uh, dumb but a uh, narcissistic type character so that was enjoyable so as this movie goes on, you know, they're making their way, they're finding informants and people, they're trying to get to this lab, this science lab, where they were doing experiments, we don't really know what kind, but we need to go there, um, so as the movie goes on, literally an hour and ten minutes pass, and I'm like, hey, how come, like, none of the main cast so far has died yet, like, there was that big amount at the beginning of the movie, but here we are, like an hour and ten minutes. No one else has died yet. Like, what's going on? Isn't this a Suicide Squad movie? And then the movie kind of picks up. Uh, there's a complete tonal shift. They get to this lab, finally. There's like a huge slow motion sequence where they're walking through the rain, going to this lab. And it's awesome. Um, there's, uh, let's see there's like this scene with king shark I, I forget if it's at this point or later in the movie probably one of the most violent scenes in the entire movie is king shark literally pulling someone apart it it reminded me of a fatality for mortal Kombat or something like some sub-zero type stuff like spine and everything i was like what what like bro what is going on here um, so they all get into this building, and this is when stuff gets kind of crazy, so, uh, King Shark and Peacemaker are in charge of planting explosives, um, uh, Rick Flag, Harley Quinn, uh, they're, no wait, Harley Quinn and Polka Dot Man, they're tasked to go somewhere else, we have, like, Rick Flag, Ratcatcher Girl, downstairs with this like scientist guy they captured to take them to this lab and then they get to the lab and wow the movie turns into a horror film like there's all these people with like stars kind of like face huggers from alien stuck to people's faces down there we learn that they're like zombies they're dead but they're being kept alive by these like starro uh star fish type things and then we see the huge cage with Starro, the Conqueror. Uh, for those that don't know, Starro is a very, very old DC villain. He's actually one of the first, I think, Justice League villains, uh, if I remember correctly. So I was like, it would be funny if Superman shows up and like just destroys Starro here, but that didn't happen. Um, but yes, yeah, Starro is down there. He was being kept prisoner for years and years. They were doing tests on him, and then all of these people from uh, Corto Maltese were basically being, like, kidnapped, taken to this laboratory, and experimented on. Really messed up stuff. We get we see, like, all these kids and women and children up there. Uh, pretty messed up. It's a very dark scene. Like, the way I'm saying it might make it sound like, oh, it was a creepy lab, but no, it, it's, it was pretty messed up. Like, very, uh, very very disturbing so rick flag is like whoa this is terrible who did this and they kind of discover that america was involved and the reason they were sent to this lab was to destroy it so no information would come out and rick flag was like you know what this is terrible
terrible. We have to, like, let the world know about this terrible information. So he, as he's doing that, Peacemaker comes down, and he's like, Amanda Waller gave me special orders to make sure everything here is destroyed. So he was kind of a double agent this whole time. He wasn't really with the whole crew. So him and Rick Flag start to fight. There's a huge fight scene. Everything explodes. We don't know why at this point. This stuff was supposed to explode much later. And there's like a whole fight sequence of Rick Flag and Peacemaker fighting. And it ends with Peacemaker killing Rick Flag with a brutal fatality. We get to see it in detail. I'm not going to go into spoilers or anything. Let's just say it involves his heart. And the fact that they actually show like detail really reminded me of Mortal Kombat. Like, James Gunn, have you been playing Mortal Kombat 10? Like, while filming this movie, please explain the need for all of this. Um, so, yeah, uh, that part kind of made me flinch, because it was pretty, like, gruesome. Uh, then the movie does a flashback to let us know what happened before. And then, basically, we see, like, Polka Dot Man and Harley Quinn upstairs fighting a bunch of guards. Uh, Polka Dot Man shooting his polka dots, that's his special power. And he sets off these explosives by accident. And at that same time, downstairs, we have the best scene in the movie with King Shark. It's probably my favorite. So he's down in this, like, aquarium, and there's all these fish. And King Shark gets close to the glass, and all these, like, jellyfish are there being all cute. Following him, he's like, yay, I found friends, and he's all happy. King Shark's the best in this movie, like, crazy killer shark, but he's funny and entertaining. So he's, like, all happy playing with these uh, fish through the tank and stuff like that. Explosives go off, all the fish come out of the tank, the building starts to collapse, and then all these jellyfish turn out to be, like, these evil alien jellyfish things with, like, razor-sharp teeth, and they start jumping on his body and stuff. It's terrible. Uh, they make the, the water, like, completely blood red. So, you're kind of worried for King Shark there. There's many scenes in this movie where you think he dies, but he doesn't. He survives to the end. Uh, Harley Quinn and everybody else trying to be safe as the building starts to collapse. Bloodsport at the very top with Harley and Polka Dot Man are very afraid as the building's, like, falling and crumbling, and there's military guards outside shooting everybody, and it's just a really crazy, intense scene. And then downstairs, Starro escapes, kills this professor guy. Everybody's starting to panic, because Starro is very powerful. He unleashes some kind of attack, which throws out millions of these little, like, star parasites on the people so he can mind control them because that's what Starro does and he gets powerful by mind controlling people and yeah so that's what's going on and uh there's a little scene with a uh, peacemaker and blood sport peacemaker wants to kill a uh, rat catcher girl because uh he she basically saw uh peacemaker kill rick flag through the heart and she got this uh, data device that Rick Flag wanted to give the world. So Peacemaker's like, well, I have to kill you. And then right then, Bloodsport shows up. He likes Ratcatcher Girl. He's like, you're not going to do this. And they shoot each other at the exact same time. Bloodsport's bullet is smaller, goes completely through Peacemaker's bullet. So their bullets collide. Bloodsport's bullet goes through his, shattering his and then hitting him in, like, the, the heart or something. So, that was a crazy scene. Or wait, it doesn't hit his heart. It hits, like, his lung or shoulder or something. And he collapses, and everybody escapes the building. Uh, all the military and people of this, like, town uh, get controlled, or get the ones that don't escape. But uh, the Suicide Squad is there basically shooting at these, like, uh, starfish things, alien starfish things, parasites, as Astaro walks across the city, and Amanda Waller's like, well, you guys completed your mission, head back home, and they're like, wait a second, there's like a huge enemy out here destroying and killing all these people, we need to do something, and she's like, not our problem, 
So at that moment, they're kind of like, we're going to do it anyway. So they go, decide to fight. There's some kind of power struggle at the office with Amanda Waller. One of her employees takes her out and tells the Suicide Squad to go fight Starro. So they all like team up to fight Starro in one of the best sequences in the movie. We get a lot of amazing shooting action from Bloodsport with his super precise aim. Uh, we get to see Harley Quinn fight. We get to see Ratcatcher Girl summon the rats. And there's like millions of rats fighting and climbing up Starro. We get to see Killer Shark biting into Starro. They tell him he's food. And he like just goes up and starts biting at <laughs> Starro and stuff. It's funny. Uh, Polka Dot Man, rest in peace. This is where he dies in the movie. He does an awesome attack, breaking Starro's, like, one of his, one of his legs. Uh, the, the reason he does this is because Bloodsport tells him, Hey, that's your mom. And he gets really mad and shoots, like, a thousand polka dots at Starro's leg, breaking off a piece. And then he, like, later gets squashed. It's kind of funny and sad. At the same time, I don't know how James Gunn managed to make a death scene sad and funny. But that's what, that's how it was. Um... And then, as the movie builds up, basically, all the rats start climbing up Starro. And then Harley Quinn is on top of a building with a spear, and she's like, I know what my purpose with the spear is. And she just runs at Starro with the spear, jumps straight to him. And I'm just going to describe Starro. Think of a huge star, like starfish, with an enormous eye in the center. That's Starro. And she jumps and stabs right into his eye with this spear. And she, like, sinks into his eye like it's a swimming pool. And then all the rats, like, come through the hole that she made and start eating Starro from the inside. It sounds really gruesome, but the way they filmed the scene actually made it kind of nice in a weird way. Like, I know a lot of you are probably like, what in the world? Rats going through an alien star's eye. That sounds disgusting, but it's like all colorful and there's like music playing and everything's in slow motion. James Gunn, you're a genius. I don't know how you made that appealing, but you kind of did. Um, and yeah, then Starro dies. Harley Quinn gets out of there safe. Ratcatcher Girl is safe. King Shark is safe. Bloodsport is safe. They all head back. That's kind of the end of the movie, and they all get their sentences reduced because they blackmail Amanda Waller with the information they stole from a lab, and they're like, if you don't let us free, we're gonna, you know, give the whole world this information about what the U.S. did here, and she has to let them free then, so kind of a win for them, and then there's an after credit scene which shows Peacemaker in a hospital somewhere waking up because he didn't die and I guess that's possibly a teaser for the next movie. Now, I liked this movie, but I have to agree that it was pretty dark at times and I kinda, I, I feel weird saying this, but I kind of wish the violence was toned down just a, just, just a bit. Like, it felt a little bit over the top, like excessive to the Mortal Kombat level. And I feel like more people would go see this movie if they toned that down. Kind of like the older Suicide Squad movie. Um, that one was very colorful and tried to appeal to, like, teenagers. Whereas this one definitely tries to appeal to an older adult audience. So, yeah. Uh, I feel like I have a super controversial opinion, but... I kind of enjoyed the original Suicide Squad movie more. I kind of did. I know a lot of people hated it, but I kind of enjoyed that movie a little bit more than this one. And I'm saying that as someone that enjoyed this movie, so this movie's not bad. King Shark's amazing. I like Polka Dot Man. I feel like we got to know the characters more in this one than in the older Suicide Squad movie. But just some style things about the older one I liked more than this one. That's, that's all. That's all. Still, still, go see this one if you're a fan of DC, especially their darker work. And, uh, yeah, that's everything, so thank you all for listening, for watching, and I will see you all next time. So long, and farewell.